Hi everyone, this is Dr. Lusha Rani. Today I want to demonstrate potentiometric titration. Potentiometric titrations are usually performed by using a potentiometer. The same titrations involving the principle of potentiometry can also be performed by using the pH meter. So today I want to demonstrate a potentiometric titration by using Elico Li120 pH meter. In my previous video, I have shown you the working of this instrument and calibration of this instrument. In this instrument, we can see two options here. One is the pH mode and the other is the uh, millivolts mode, that is the potential mode. So today I have switched on to the potential mode because I want to perform a potentiometric titration. Hence, using this instrument, we can even perform potentiometry also simply by moving on to the potential mode. Potentiometric titration is based on the fact that the potential across the two electrodes, that is the indicator electrode and the reference electrode, will be changing sharply at the end point. And this end point can be determined by constructing a graph taking potential on y-axis and volume of the titrant on x-axis. Before starting the potentiometric titration, let me give you a brief idea about significance of potentiometric titrations. Titrations are basically laboratory methods to analyze the amount of analyte present in the given sample. There are different types of titrations based on the nature of the analyte like acid-based titrations, redox titrations, complexometric titrations, precipitation titrations, etc. In all those titrations, the end point or equilibrium point is identified by a color change which is usually indicated by the indicator reagents like phenophthalene, methyl red, etc. But when an indicator is unable to show the color change at the end point, in such cases, we can determine the end point by potentiometry. Today's potentiometry I am performing by using Elico Li120 pH meter because this particular instrument is having two options here. One is the pH mode and the other one is the millivolts mode that is measurement of potential. So we can successfully conduct a potentiometric titration by moving on to this voltage mode by using this instrument. And here. The potential is being measured by an electrode here. This is a combination potential electrode. Combination electrode, uh, the name itself indicates it is having two electrodes in it. One is the indicator electrode and the other one is a reference electrode. The indicator electrode here is the glass electrode that is the glass bulb. The membrane of the glass bulb itself acts as the indicator electrode which indicates the potential of the solution that we have taken here. And then the reference electrode is a silver silver chloride electrode. You can see a small probe inside that is the reference electrode whose potential remains constant irrespective of the solution in which it is dipped in. So here we are going to get the potential readings in relation to the reference electrode. So today I am going to demonstrate a potentiometric titration uh, among acids and bases that is I am going to show a titration between uh, strong acid and strong base. For this I have taken 20 ml of 0.1 normal HCl in this beaker. And I have filled the burette with 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide solution. I have taken a basic solution that is 0.1 normal NaOH in uh, burette and I have taken 20 ml of hydrochloric acid in the beaker. So I am going to titrate the hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide solution by continuously adding this titrant 0.5 ml at a time into this and then stirring with a stirrer and will be observing the change in the potential. So I am going into the read mode. So you can see the titration has started. We are continuously adding sodium hydroxide solution from the burette, 0.5 ml at a time, and then stirring with a glass rod. You can even use a mechanical stirrer. And the electrode seen dipped into the hydrochloric acid solution present in the beaker. And as we continuously add the sodium hydroxide solution, you can 
also view that there is a change in the potential. So continuously you have to note down the volume of sodium hydroxide added and the changes in the potential that are being seen. So now you enter the volume of sodium hydroxide added and the potential that you have noted into an excel sheet. Also in the excel sheet we have to calculate the delta V value that is the difference in the volumes uh, or the successive volumes that is uh, it's always a 0.5 ml because every time we have added 0.5 ml to this hydrochloric acid solution. And also you have to calculate the delta E values. Um, that is the difference in the potentials, difference in successive potentials and these values can be simply obtained by applying the excel formulas and next you have to calculate the delta E by delta V values. So like this you have calculated all the required values like delta V, delta E and delta E by delta V and now you have to select the required factors like volume of sodium hydroxide and delta E by delta E values. So now you can see I have selected two columns and then you have to insert graph that is the scatter with the smooth lines then you will be seeing this type of a graph. So here uh, the tip of the peak when you uh, put the cursor at the tip of the peak you can know the volume of sodium hydroxide that is run down to get the end point. You can also just note down or uh, label the x-axis and y-axis using the excel options. So the same thing is being done there. We have noted down the x-axis as volume of sodium hydroxide uh, that is consumed and then uh, we are noting down the y-axis label as delta E by delta V and you can also note down the chart title as potentiometric titration. When you put the cursor at the tip of the peak, you can see the uh, volume that is required to get the end point. That is, uh, uh, the particular graph shows 19.5 ml. When 19.5 ml of sodium hydroxide has been consumed, the end point has been reached. It is 19.5 ml as shown in the curve. So by simply using the formula V1N1 is equal to V2N2, we can calculate the exact normality of sodium hydroxide solution where V1 is the volume of 0.1N HCl that is 20 ml taken into the beaker, N1 is the normality of HCl that is 0.1N and V2 is the volume of sodium hydroxide that is run down to get the end point which is obtained from the potentiometric titration curve that is shown above and then N2 is the normality of NaOH. So dear students, this is how you can simply calculate the exact normality and perform standardizations by potentiometric titrations. You can post your doubts and suggestions in the comment box. I will be soon back with another technical video. Till then thank you and take care.